Hey guys, you ready to do the number one worst car engine of all time, according to me, who said Tyler? Well, let's do it. The number one worst engine of all time that I could think of, and let me see if I can get these glare. There we go. Worst engine of all time has to be the Chrysler 2.7 liter V6. Now, uh, I told you in another video about the criteria that I used and unfortunately this engine kind of failed on all of them. The Chrysler 2.7 liter V6 engine uh, was used in a few different um, Chrysler models. They were used in the, like the, uh, what was it, Dodge Intrepid, like a 90, so like a 98 through 2003 or 4 Dodge Intrepid um, maybe some of those like the uh, Chrysler, what was that, Sirius and the uh, convertible, Stratus convertible and things like that and that was actually a quick history on that, that was a product of the um, well Chrysler had at that time, they probably still do, they have this thing that they kind of conglomerate the design of engines and things with some other manufacturers and it was kind of supposed to be kind of one of those world engine things but this engine unfortunately um, its reliability has been even worse than the Cadillac North Star because it has some uh, very real very well documented problems and um, one of the main issues this engine has is it has problems with the oil return passageways in the engine block they are cast into the engine and that combined with the fact that it runs hot um, the, these engines 90% of them that fail suffer from coked up oil passages it means the oil goes up to the top of the engine and can't get back down to the oil pan so this happens more and more over time as more gunk builds up the worse it gets so it's like a circulatory problem in your body so essentially what happens is it pumps all the oil up to the engine top of the engine and then the bearings and everything start starving and then eventually it spins the bearing and starts knocking and uh, also it tends to uh, gunk up the oil supply to the timing chain it has a long timing chain in it so if the bearing doesn't spin first if it doesn't spin a rod bearing first it um, it's liable to stretch and break the timing chain or it wears a hole in the, the cover you know just terrible problems and these things happen like at 80 90 thousand miles now I know there's gonna be some people that will always say and it's not not being mean about it, it's not a bad thing but they always say well I've got one of those that's got 200,000 miles on it. it's always been perfect well to that I say that I'm, first of all I'm glad for you because you're certainly in a minority with those things and um, I also say that you know you won the luck of the draw on that one because there's always going to be some that actually of anything that actually defy the odds and and last a long time or don't fail or whatever you know it's just luck basically because uh, you know these engines those engines suffered these problems and they're, they're like I said they're well documented there's tried to be I think they were going to try to get a class action lawsuit against Chrysler to uh, do something about that and we're going to get into that in a minute but so that's you know that was that and and people you know get stuck with these cars you can find them all over the place on Craigslist and eBay and they say the same thing they say knocking engine bad engine needs an engine blah blah you know doesn't run smokes that's another thing you'll see you don't see many of those cars on the road anymore they're about to be extinct when they all finally blow up they're going to be extinct thankfully and you'll see some of them are still running going down the road you'll notice that they're puffing smoke out of the tailpipe that's because all the all the oil is up in the top of the engine where the valve guides are and it's starting to suck some oil down in there 
So it's going to blow pretty soon. If you own one of these cars, get rid of it. So that's part, that's, that's what's wrong with the engine. That's what's causing the failures. Well, so it's got terrible reliability. So here's the worst part of it, if it can get worse than that. So you, you go, you have one of these cars, it's got 80,000 miles on it, it's out of warranty, of course. So you think, well, maybe Chrysler will goodwill part of the cost of replacing the engine. And that's what they do, they replace them, they don't rebuild them. And so they all these documented cases on the internet where people take their cars back, and the first thing they do is they look at it and it's knocking or it's seized up or whatever, and they say, yeah, well, it needs a new engine, it's gonna be $5,000. Well, the damn car ain't worth $5,000. So Chrysler refused to goodwill anything. And get this, this is what, and this is well documented also. This is not made up. This is not anything I made up. Chrysler, see, the thing about this was that this had the chance to turn into a very, very, very expensive problem for Chrysler. See, and why it was going to be expensive if Chrysler had owned up to what was going on, and they knew what was wrong with those engines. It took a while. It took 80,000 miles and five or six years for problems to start cropping up, but they knew about it. But Chrysler, instead of taking the more expensive, the right thing to do, what they did was they... The, when a person, an unfortunate soul, would carry their now knocking or seized up Dodge Intrepid or whatever it was to their local dealer, it's blown up. The dealer looks at it, like I said, I'll quote some for a new engine, and Chrysler wasn't going to kick in anything. They said they might consider if the owner had documented every single oil change that and that it had been done at a Chrysler dealership on time. Now, how many people you think actually did that? There's people that do that, but how many people you did out of average of all the owners of those vehicles that actually did that? So, you know, there may be a few, but all the ones that didn't document every single oil change on time at the Chrysler dealership only, exclusively, they cannot have it changed anywhere else, even one time. Chrysler just said, screw you. We're not doing anything for you. Nope, not helping you. Not helping you. Well, get this, and this is this is fact. This is not made up. There's a several different stories that are on the internet posted talk about one case where uh, somebody actually had that. They had one of those cars with that engine, and it tore up. And they had all the service records that had been that had been serviced at. The Chrysler dealership on time every time. So there you go. Okay, now you got to do some form of Chrysler because I've got all my paperwork. I did everything I was supposed to. It still blew up. Well, they they get this. They allegedly it's several stories I saw. I will say allegedly they allegedly Chrysler the dealership tried to blame the technician that did the oil changes on not doing them properly. They tried to blame him and hang him on the cost of replacing an engine in those car in that car. Can you believe that? Poor guy had nothing to do with it. If they were gonna do that. That's that's you know, that's the kind of crap, crap, crap that almost put Chrysler out of business, you know. And uh so everybody has these cars, they're screwed. They're screwed. Nobody is going to spend $5,000 to replace an engine in that car. It's not even worth that anymore. So that's why there's so many of them now that are scrapped in the junkyard. Okay, well, here's the thing. Um, in addition to that, Chrysler's not going to pay for it. It's not under warranty. So they're, 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 they're out, you know. So everybody is just... SOL on that. And here's the thing, you know, people were clamoring for a recall on those. And I don't know I don't know how much that it cost to buy off the federal agent who's it NHSTA or, or whatever I think it is. But I don't know how much it cost to buy them off 
to avoid a recall, but I'm sure that happened because can you imagine how much that would cost Chrysler to recall every single car that had one of those potentially defective engines in it? Can you imagine how much it cost them? They would absolutely go out of business. They couldn't afford to do it. And plus, they didn't have the engines to replace all of them. Even if they had done it on a rotating basis, they say, well, if your vehicle starts knocking or starts smoking or quits running, and we'll say we extend the warranty to 100,000 miles on the engine, up from whatever it was, 36,000 or whatever, you know, if they had done that, then they still couldn't do it. They, because one thing, the engine the engines that they had to replace them with were not improved. They, they never improved those engines. They never fixed them. If they did, they never told anybody. And there's no evidence to support that they ever fixed the oiling system in those engines. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's the deal with those. That's why I nominate that as the number one worst engine of all time because not only is it unreliable, not only as expensive as you, could, you know what to repair or to replace, but most of all, most of all, Chrysler would not stand behind it and would not support their own product. You know, that just makes me so mad that a car maker can make, a, make and sell a product that is so terrible, yet they will gladly take thousands of dollars of your money to replace or repair their own shit you know that's that's you know I'm, I'm just telling you something that's why no even if it makes people mad as heck to admit it that's why honda and toyota and mazda have gotten where they are in this country because you know i think of the three car manufacturers that exist now in america gm christ the big three I think Ford is the only one that's been a stand-up company that has honestly tried to make quality cars and trucks for a long time now. And so, you know, that that's just it. That's uh, and it's sad too. And it's sad too that that's that's the mental philosophy. But uh, that's another one, guys. Any kind of Chrysler, I don't care how dirt cheap it is. With a 2.7 liter engine, do not ever buy one. Never. You may as well take your money out and throw it out in the street and run over it and leave because that's as good as it's going to do. Those things are terrible. They suck. They suck. They suck the worst. They What was it Beavis and Butthead said one time? They suck like nothing else has sucked before. That's right. They have. <laughs> so, All right, guys. We'll see you. Have a good one.